Jesus uh, commissioned us all to go into the world and proclaim the gospel to everyone. But he, and he gives a promise at the end of that though. He says, as you're going, don't worry, I will be with you all the way to the end. We were the first Western missionaries ever to live behind the Iron Curtain covertly, crossing into Poland. You did what you had to do to survive, and it was difficult. Being followed all the time was difficult. It was stressful. But we knew God was with us. We knew we were in the center of His will. And no matter what the circumstance was, we were going to trust Him and find a way to work through it. One of the dramatic moments of our time in living undercover, martial law had been instituted in the country, which the word for martial law in Polish is actually state of war. So they declared, uh, declared a state of war on the, in their own country so that the military could take over. And I was in my kind of remote uh, office, kind of nondescript office, a place where I could do work both on whether it's the cover or the ministry. And I got a call and it was a person who said he was from City Hall who was reviewing uh, the approval for this business license I was trying to get so I could be there under that as a cover. And so I felt kind of funny about the, them, him calling me because actually that phone number was not in any of the documentation that I had sent on the application. There was no way for him to know that unless they were following me and bugging me. Which, bear in mind, is we lived in Poland under the communist rule and us being as foreigners and us being suspicious foreigners. Our phone was bugged, our house was bugged, we were followed. People would show up where there'd be people in the restaurant where we are and you, you can identify them. You know they're the ones that are listening in and trying to see who you're meeting with and so forth. So this call came in to my semi-clandestine office and he didn't have the number so I know something's wrong here. So he says, yes, I need, uh, I want to have you come and meet me and at such and such a cafe and to discuss things. So I went and met this person and it was in a coffee shop. However, there was no one in there but him <laughs> and two guys at the door. And so it was really just a KGB uh, location that they controlled that they were doing interrogations. So when I sat down with him, I wanted to not be on the defensive, I wanted to be on the offense. I said, hey, I, ne I need to know who you are because you had my phone number and nobody has that phone number. So who are you? You're not from the city. Because I called that department, spoke to the head of the department, and there's no one with your name there. So he said, well, all right, yes, I'm a KGB officer, and he showed me his ID and put it back in his department. So you're here because we want to talk to you. So I sat there, had a cup of tea, and a seven-hour conversation. And the conversation was very intimidating. This is an interrogation in a second language. You know, that's a fatiguing deal, and particularly with how long it was going on. And uh, during the time, halfway through it, you know, he was trying to intimidate me, but then he would say, well, like, why, why do all these people come over to your house, you know? And I said, look, hey, you want to know what happens in these meetings? I'll tell you. I said, we have this little booklet and we, where we talk about what it means to know God. And there are four basic principles. And I, so I went through the, the four laws with him, not from a booklet, but from memory in a second language, in Polish. And then when we got to the prayer, I said, hey, would you want to become a Christian and follow Jesus with us? And you could right now if you wanted to. Do you want to pray right now? And he, he, he was actually kind of moving toward it. And, but when I asked him for a commitment, he said, oh, no, 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 no. I, and, just, and so I realized I had kind of shaken him or, and the power of the Spirit of the Lord had actually touched him. So, you know, one of our greatest fears was getting caught by the security people and what would happen with that. But I can say that whole time I was in that interview, I could feel the Lord's presence and know that, yes, He promised, He is with me. 
in very, very tangible way, I experience Matthew 28, 20. He will be with me even to the end of the age. He was with me in the KGB interview or interrogation. And at about the seventh hour, I said to him, I said, look, I'm going to get up and leave right now this, and without his permission. I'm going to get up and leave. I'm going to walk out the door. If you ever want me to come again, you have to allow me to bring representation from my embassy and you have to be ready to throw me out of the country. Neither of those things do you want to do. So don't call me. I stood up, turned around and was walking out. But it took every ounce of strength in me not to turn around and look at him as to what he was doing or reacting. And I walked out past the two guys at the door and I left and I went home. And I never heard from him again. So when we get to things in our lives, no matter whether they're in some very dramatic, difficult situation like that, no matter what it is, we trust God to help us work through it. Be confident that the Lord is with you and will be with you. And I would challenge you, uh, whether it's in going to some restricted access uh, place or just in your own personal life, realize that in each circumstance you go through, whether it's ministry or whether it's business or whether it's anything in your family life, God is with you and you can count on that.